this ministry. This ministry. This ministry that Pastor Brady has been called to serve. He has been called to serve in this ministry here at the Testament Missionary Baptist Church. That's what we was come to encourage him today to keep on serving. Twenty years is a few years and he's been standing behind this sacred desk on Sunday morning proclaiming the word of God. He had some hills to climb. Some burdens that he had to bear. He had some good days. Oh, yeah. he had some bad days. But he can declare, as the songwriter said, all the night, the good days. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. I could complain. Yes, sir. But I won't complain. Amen. God can good to pass the break. Amen. I believe that you just meant you need to salute him. Amen. For 20 years of church. of Christ ought to be thankful. Amen. 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 You ought to be thankful. Amen. Amen. That these past three years, after three years of COVID, yeah. that you're still standing. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. There are so many oh. doors that, oh, yeah. that did not open back That's up. Right. Yes, Lord. So many pastors that threw up your hand said, I quit. I'm, I will not go another further. Did not, did not make it through the COVID. Amen. Yes, God. Quit. Some Thank died. God. Naturally, physically, and then some died mentally. Yes. Yes. Don't know what to do. Yes. But look at your pastor in that white over there. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. And in the midst of all oh, yeah. that we've been through, oh, yes. in the midst of all that we're dealing with right now, right. you can still say, New Testament will still stand. Amen. Our pastor and first lady is still standing. And that's enough to get to give God praise, right? Oh, yes, it is. Yes. Amen. 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 And, and, and this anniversary, I didn't come to beg you to give them that because, amen, you all know now. Right. Amen. After 20 years, you don't know what you got to do for your best. Amen. Right. Y'all got quiet right there. Right. You don't know. <laughs> Some things do uh, not need to be repeated. Amen. Some yeah. things you just, you just hold it over. Let me see somebody text go. Got to go. This ministry. Oh, sad. Therefore, saying that we have this ministry. Yes, mm. sir. Amen. That we have received mercy. That we don't give up, we don't, we don't give in. We and this Christian race and this thing called Christianity, we have at least three callings. Well, we right. have a call to repentance. We have a call to labor and serve. And then, after all has been said and done, we have a call to reward. Amen. We live in a day and time where pastors want the title and the position but they don't want to serve. My God, my God. They want the name, they want the status but they don't want to serve. Help us today. But Jesus did not call you for the title. Come on now, come on. He didn't call you for the position. Yeah. He called you to serve. Yeah. And Jesus himself taught us how to serve. Yeah. When he was there with his disciples and he uh, undirted himself, yeah. his robe himself, took off his, his uh, master garments and yeah. Yeah. picked up a towel and a basin and began to 
wash the disciples' feet and he got them. He got to Mr. Peter. Hmm. Peter said, Lord, you cannot wash my feet. Yeah. And Jesus said, if I wash not your feet, you have no part of me. Mr. Peter said, Lord, wash me all over. Uh -huh. Mr. Peter said, like, Lord, just, just wash me. Jesus washed their feet. And after he had washed their feet, he he did, he put down the towel and went and picked up his robe mm -hmm. and told them, you call me master, mm -hmm. you call me Lord, and I am your master and I am your Lord. Right. And if your master and your Lord can wash your feet, well, right. mm -hmm. then you go and wash right. one another's feet. Yeah. Yeah. He taught us how to serve. In order to serve, we got to humble ourselves. We got to forget about our title and our position. And recognize it's not about us, but it's about the people that we are serving. He called Pastor Brady here to serve the New Testament Mission and Baptist Church. And there, there are just a few little things, three little people points I want to pull from the text and we shall be out of our way in this calling. First of all, there is the chronicity of the call. All right. Somebody say chronicity. That word, amen, is a good word to me because I know it well. All right. And then I had to go and check to check my books. Check the book. And that big word simply means is to have knowledge. All right. Compensity. Okay. Compensity. Compensity. So he says that verse one, we have this ministry. The ministry demands that we be constant. We be honest. We have in integrity. It demands that one never quits. I said it demands that one never quits. Paul not did not quit, nor did he give up for any reason. Even the cause of persecution, of being weary, or exhausted, he did not quit, amen. He kept on doing what God had called him to do. The text here says in verse one, it says that we have this ministry. Mm. This refers here to the great task that God has given us. Amen. The task of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus the Christ. Come on, yeah. right. that's, that's a great task to stand for. The Bible said, woe be unto him who preach not the gospel of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Verse 3 in, in chapter 4 of Corinthians it said, but if our gospel be hidden, it be hidden unto uh, them that which are lost. Now if folks are going to be saved, if lives are going to be changed, this gospel has to be preached. Yeah, the message that man can now have a glorious relationship with God through his spirit. Spirit here, the spirit, this ministry is the ministry of the glorious gospel of Jesus the Christ, amen, to tell men and women, boys and girls, that they can be saved, that they can be forgiven of their sins, no matter what you've done, no matter how, how, how you bad you've been, God says, I still can save you. Yeah, I think the songwriter just got through saying, he'll do it if he have to reach way down. And, and pick you up. And I need to tell you, he had to do a little reaching to get me. Amen. I'm not always been the preacher. I to be honest with myself because I know where I came from. A lot, a lot of us came man, came, cannot identify because we want to act like we've been saved all of our lives. We want to act like we've been good at two shoes all of our lives. But you know you've been in the hole in the wall. Amen. You, 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 you. You know about you know about the common law. You know about the innocent. Yes, right. Amen and Bob and all that stuff. Oh, and thank you, Lord. Y'all ain't gonna help me. Ah, ah, ah. Now. Nah. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. This ministry. Yeah, that he can stand here on Sunday morning and preach the word of God. Amen. I've, I've learned, amen, through COVID, amen, that crowds does not excite me no more. Yeah, crowds don't excite me because I preached for two years, amen, with my musician and the camera in front of me. Amen. I preached like a thousand folks watching. Amen. And so if you don't say amen, I'm used to that. Amen. <laughs> Well, I'm used to preaching the quiet church. Right. I heard it. <laughs> if you don't say nothing, that's all right. <laughs> amen. Because I've been there for two years. Didn't say a word. Amen. Had to do on. Amen. <laughs> amen. But somehow, some way, yeah. God made a way. Yeah. 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 He said there is the call for second and there is the compassion, the compassion in the call. He says that in verse 1, he said, we have received mercy. Paul he recognized that his calling was a result of the mercy of God. This means here that he did not deserve, he did not deserve to serve the Lord, but serving him was a privilege and not a right. Yeah, you see, we don't deserve, we don't deserve, I don't deserve to be standing here right now. I, I don't deserve, but thanks be to God, amen, for his mercy. Yeah, this mercy means that we are, we are not indispensable. That we should never think that we're so important that, that God cannot get along. Amen, amen, right. amen. Yeah, mercy, he refused that attitude that we uh, may have talents, we may have skills, we may have great endowment by which we can serve God, but it is the result amen. of God's divine mercy. Yes, it is. It is not because we've been good. That's right. That's but thank right. thank God for the goodness of God. Yes. I mean, I thank you, God. Two little boys that were sitting at the table one day. Mm. And uh, Mama told the boys, y'all go outside and play. All right, all right. And she said to them, now, y'all go out there. And if y'all don't get in no fight, he said, when you come back in, I'm going to give you some milk and cookies. <laughs> So the little boys, they went on outside, and they were playing, and after a while, they got the tussling, and they tussling, got in the fight. My they, God. They realized now that they're fighting, and they said, now we're not going to get the milk and cookies. Well. Mama told us that if we fight, we wouldn't get no cookies, so the cookies is gone. But when they got back in the house and sat down at the table, uh, the milk and cookies was on the table. The little boy looked at, her, uh, at the boy and said, listen, I thought your mama said that, that we were not going to get no milk and cookies. <laughs> she said, well, we've been bad, but mama been good. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to tell you? It's not that we've been so good, Thank you, Lord. but God's been good. And I thank God here today for the goodness of God. I thank God for his mercy that endures forever. It is. He says here that we may have all the talent in the world. Pastors and preachers, we can put it all we want to. We can tune all we want to. But if it, is, if it had not been for the mercies of God, if the Lord had not showed us some mercy, Oh, we could just be here sounding brass. Right. Templing and tingling brass. Here it is. Here it is. Thirdly, he says, he says, if I'm going to be true to my calling, not only is there compassion in the call, but there is the courage in the call. Right. He says that we faint not. Okay. The word faint here means not to give up. Yes. Not to lose heart. Not to become discouraged. Right. And I need to tell you, I need to tell you over these past uh, two and a half, three years. It took a lot for me to stand. Every pastor that proclaimed the word of God, if he be true to himself, he would say there were some discouraging moments. There were times when he felt like giving up. There were times he felt like I'm just going to bowl up my body. Turn it in my preaching robe. I'm going home, but somewhere deep down inside, 
they had a Jeremiah moment. Hallelujah. They something on the inside. Hallelujah. That feels like fire. Shut up in mind. In the bones. I would quit, but I, I can't quit because God has been too good to me. That's right. That's right. And he says in him, we faint. We faint not. And I need to tell you, Paul here did not lose heart. He did not act cowardly, nor did he act uh, courageously. No matter what uh, the discouragement may have been, the encouragement was far greater. In other words, it looked bad. Mm. When I looked ahead, what it looked bad, what it looked ahead of me, was far greater than what was behind me. There's two lessons here we need to understand about the statements that Paul here makes. First of all, there is the fearlessness. The word translate faith not has uh, especially especially to do with our courage. The call requires courage to do the work of God. Uh, you cannot be afraid when you get ready to do the work of God. You have to understand you gotta have some uh, some Jeremiah spirits. You gotta have some Moses spirit. You keep on going when it seems like you cannot make it any further. But not only do you need to be fearless, but you got to be faithful. The word faith not means to speak of his faithfulness. We must not quit serving uh, the Lord. Many things, yeah, may cause us to want to quit. But we must know who called us. We must know who we are working for. Oh, that's right. We must know that our calling is not a temporary call. All right. We must be loyal to the Lord at all times. Yes, yes. You got to understand that quitters are many in the Lord's service. Yes. But if you're going to walk in your calling uh, and fulfill your calling, you got to remain faithful. Yes. Uh, Paul says it this way. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, he says, Therefore, my beloved brothers, he said, Be ye steadfast, yeah, unmovable, always abounding, abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. That's great. I want to pause there and tell you, your labor is not in vain. Yeah. I know sometimes it may look like we're not being appreciated. My Lord. Nobody may not pat us on the back all the time. Yeah. But you got to understand your labor yeah. is not in vain. Yeah. You may not see it on this side yeah. of the river. Yeah. But when you make it to glory land, yeah. Hallelujah. God has a reward waiting for us. Oh, yeah. You got to understand, he says, be thy faithful. Yeah, unto death. First Peter says in 5 and 8, he said, be sober. Be vigilant because the adversary. The devil a roaring lion is walking, seeking whom he may divide. The devil's always trying to get us off the mountain. He's always trying to get us to stop preaching and proclaiming the word of God. But I come to tell you, my son, on this Lord's day, you got to be true to your calling. Oh, yeah. You got to stand when standing is not popular. You got to stand when they don't want to hear you. You got to stand when they don't want to support you. For you know that your labor is not in vain. You got to be like the songwriter said, a charge to keep our help and a God to glorify, to serve this present age and their calling to fulfill. I uh, made all the powers engage uh, to do my master's will. Uh, you got to understand, Pastor Brady Hill, that uh, God has called you, uh, yeah, to serve, yeah at the New Testament church. And, and when you serve, don't worry, yeah, about what men may say about you. As long 
has it pleasing in the, the man upstairs. And I discovered here yeah, that the, the God has a way of making your enemies uh, turn around and bless you. Now, those who uh, said you wasn't going to make it, uh, said you wasn't going to come out of it, now, God has a way uh, of turning that thing around uh, and making it shameful uh, that talked about you, uh, that lied on you, uh, and misrepresented your name. Uh, shameful to uh, God has a way uh, of bringing them uh, right back around. Uh, so I just want them uh, to encourage it, Pastor Brady, uh, to keep on uh, preaching the word of God. Uh, don't worry uh, what the outside is saying. Uh, because uh, when it's all over, uh, I want to hear him say, May the work that I've done speak for me and may the life that I live and let it speak for me. I gotta leave you here, but you've been called to bless God. You've been called to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. God gotta use him. He's using it up right in You gotta let God use him. Let him use your feet to run the errands of mercy. Let him use your hand to do the work of benevolence. Let him use your eyes to see the need of the parents and let him use your ears and to hear the cry of the friends and you gotta let him use it but when this whole life is over God got a right he got a way of blessing you I heard the songwriter say when the storm of life is raging all you gotta tell the Lord is stand by me Anybody in here that can testify that God will stand by you. Good evening. And may the Lord bless you. Real good. Thank you, Pastor Brady. Happy anniversary to you. 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 Happy the Lord, but I want to encourage you that every church got members at the house, every church got members they came back, so don't feel like them that you're all by yourself. Just wait on the Lord in due time. The Lord will He'll bring it to hand. I gotta leave you here, but I am reminded of a story I heard. It was said one day that the father took his son took him to football practice and told his boy to look at him son and listen to him daddy gotta make some errors but I want you to stay right here until I come back to pick you up the little boy he stayed right there when football practice was over the daddy had showed up I came by and said to the little boy what's your daddy Said that he's not here, but he told me to wait right here. Some of the parents said, son, do you need me to take you home? He said, no, ma'am. My daddy told me to wait right here. He folks got ready to leave. He said, son, it's get late in the evening. Do you want me to take you home? He said, no, sir, coach. My daddy told me to wait right here. The sun was almost down. Everybody was gone. The little boy was still standing by himself. And by that time, the police went pulled up and said, son, what you doing out here? He said, I'm waiting on my daddy. He told me to wait right here. The police said, son, it's dark out here. You need to get in the car. And by that time, 
said, his daddy pulled up. He said, daddy, the police were about to take me. But I told him that you told me to wait right here. That's all I got to tell you, Brady. When the Lord tell you,
Everything's gonna be alright 